Ladies and gentlemen, as you guys know on the channel, I like to dive into the story of Call of Duty. And one of the things I like to do around here is dive into the individual story of a given character. Last week, we dove in and talked about one of the main protagonists within Modern Warfare 3, which of course is John Soap McTavish. This week, we are hopping over to the other side of the fence and diving into one of the bad guys, who is of course, Vladimir Makarov. Now, if you enjoy these type of videos and want to see more, I would love to see two things. Number one, hit that like button. It shows me that you enjoy these type of story videos and want to see more because the more likes this video gets, the more likely I am to bring out more of them more often. Now, also, the other thing I would love to hear is down in the comments, let me know which characters you would like me to cover next. But as far as who we are looking at today, he's one of the biggest baddies in all of Call of Duty. He's conniving. He is methodical. Without further ado, this is the full story of Vladimir Makarov. Vladimir Makarov was born before the fall of the Soviet Union in the suburbs of Moscow. As the son of a high-ranking politician within the Russian government, Makarov watched the Soviet Union crumble, taking his father with it. The bright-eyed, intelligent boy woke up one morning to his father's hanging body. Makarov came to despise his father's weakness, as well as the failures of the Soviet Union which had brought it about. From this, he vowed to not make the same mistakes as his father, so he began a lifelong obsession. In the year 1998, Makarov joined the Russian military at the age of 18, a natural soldier with a talent for strategy. His reputation turned sour when he joined forces with an unsanctioned rogue army to maintain control of Yurzikstan. At this point, our best guess is that he actually joined Barkov's forces at this point. However, upon this invasion of Yurzikstan, the ULF, or the Yurzikstan Liberation Forces, took over, and this was Makarov's first failure. By the way, this is probably the most important part of the Modern Warfare 3 story because it actually explains why Vladimir Makarov wants to take Yurzikstan and the entire events of Modern Warfare 3, but it was never in the campaign. But he recognized traces of the Soviet Union's failures once again, so Makarov pleaded with his superiors to reclaim Yurzikstan. In other words, the reason why he keeps going after Yurzikstan is because that was his first failure and he feels if he doesn't mess this up he's somehow vindicated but at this point the kremlin does not want to take yurzik stand it's not a sanctioned attack so makarov has to go out on his own this is when makarov joins the kony group and upon joining the kony group that is when things pick up On April 6, 2019, in Verdansk, an attack was waged by none other than Vladimir Makarov. Now, at the time, Task Force 141 is sent into the area because they believe the attack is being brought out on the Verdansk Stadium by none other than Vladimir Makarov. So they go in, trying to capture him, stop the attack, protect civilians, and upon doing so, they end up eventually tracking down and capturing Vladimir Makarov. Bleeding Jesus. It's him. Vladimir Makarov, get out of the vehicle now. Nice and easy. That's far enough. Now don't fucking move. Search him. You're scared, Captain. You should be. Shut up. Get on your fucking knees. He's clean. You're going to kill me. Oh, I thought about it, yeah. I recommend you do. And I recommend you tell your men to stand down. You're not trained to stand down. That's more your strategy. So from here, we end up extracting Makarov out of Verdansk. And at this point, we end up sending him to the Russians to be held in a prison. However, that wasn't Makarov's full plan. In fact, the attack on the stadium was simply a distraction. A question. And I have a question for you. What time is it? What the hell do you care what time it is? Timing is everything, General. I think we'll all remember this moment. Some more fondly than others. The airport! He pulled us off target! You fucking son of a bitch! I'll blow your Stop. fucking brains out of you. You hear me? I swear to God, I'll do it. Do it, come on. You shut your mouth! Let me finish him. John, we have him. 
He's in custody. He's not going anywhere. Stand down, Sergeant. So the whole thing was a distraction to carry out a bigger attack on Verdansk Airport. Captain Price then stopped Soap McTavish from, well, assassinating Vladimir Makarov. And from here, Task Force 141 hands over Makarov to the Russians to be held in a gulag. But that's not before Makarov makes them one final promise. I'll be seeing you again, McTavish. I promise. Now, this part is somewhat unclear, but what I can gather from what we know is at this point, Vladimir Makarov is then in prison for four years, the entire time able to give orders to fellow soldiers, to the Kony group, so on and so forth. And we know of a couple confirmed attacks that Makarov planned, and we'll get to those in a minute, but it's also now assumed that the rest of the war in Verdansk, in other words, the entire events of Warzone 1 in Verdansk were actually being puppeted by Vladimir Makarov from in jail. The idea of involving the Zakaevs, the missiles, and on top of that, also the Alcatala, Khalid al-Assad, and everything else in between was all puppeteered by Vladimir Makarov from in prison. Now, you may be wondering why. Why did Makarov attack Verdansk to begin with? And the answer is simple. He wanted the attention of the Kremlin. He wanted to show the true power of Russia, and in doing so, also make the bad guys seemingly be the Westerners, the Americans, and everyone else in the world. And by the way, he was doing this the entire time to get the attention of the Kremlin and get them to okay him going back in and attacking Yurzikstan once again. But again, it failed. So after the war in Verdansk failed in getting the Kremlin's attention, he was still in jail and he made another turn to the Kony group, this time planning a couple of other attacks, the first of which was in Yurzikstan. He actually used the Kony group to attack Shadow Company, who is directing ballistic missiles to the Yurzikstan Liberation Forces, steal them and then give them to Al-Qatala. So the entire events of Modern Warfare 2 were actually due to an attack taken out by Kony Group, which was led by Makarov from in prison. So this explains why in that final scene of Modern Warfare 2, where Captain Price and Kate Laswell are sitting in that bar and discussing the future events for Task Force 141, this is why Laswell pulls out the picture of Makarov. It is because he was the one that actually caused that attack on Shadow Company and therefore Al-Qatala getting their hands on the ballistic missiles. He was the one. That is why at the very end there, as Task Force 141 looks at the picture of Vladimir Makarov, every single one of them recognized him. He was the one responsible for Verdansk and somehow he was now the one responsible for stealing Shadow Company's ballistic missiles. Makarov. Makarov wasn't done. He now needed the Kony Group to have some more powerful weapons. So he sent Kony Group into Almazra, specifically to the Zaya Observatory, to go underneath and get some chemical weapons to secure them and therefore have them for future chemical weapon attacks. And when it seems like Shadow Company and Task Force 141 finally succeed and extract those chemical weapons for themselves, Ivan and Nolan are actually disguised as Shadow Company operators, take out the other Shadow Company members and steal the gas for themselves. So on October 13th, 2023, the Kony group is then sent into Zordia prison complex to free Vladimir Makarov. They go in, they eliminate a bunch of the guards and eventually get to cell 627. All teams we have in, moving in 30. For me, it's a big honor. So once Makarov is freed, he has one thing in mind and one thing alone. He wants to get revenge on Yurzikstan. And the way that he wants to do it is by framing them for terror attack. The reason being, he wants the world to turn on Yurzikstan. He wants to get the Kremlin involved with another invasion on Yurzikstan. So the first thing he attempts to do this with is by stealing once again Yurzikstan ballistic missiles and strapping them with the chemical weapons stolen from Zaya Observatory. The missile. They're going to launch it, Captain. Fuck. Zero six, come in. Captain, you copy? Go for six. Cody's put Makarov's chemicals into the warheads. They're gonna launch. My missiles. My flags, my country. He wants the world to think you did this. These missiles launch, they will. The chemicals. This missile has them too. 
Vara, these are your missiles. There has to be a way to disarm it. There is. Get on the control box. We can do this together. So essentially, Makarov is trying to frame Yurzikstan for this attack, but don't worry, Captain Price and Farah end up thwarting this. They close the doors, the ballistic missiles go off, and everyone's essentially saved. However, Makarov, just like in Verdansk, has another plan. Kostovian Flight 761. There is a member of the Yurzikstan Liberation Forces aboard the plane by the name of Samara Jalal. Now, she is sitting beside a Kony Alternationalist soldier who warns her they know her family, they know her, and what they are going to do is make her look like she is attacking this Russian plane, making her seem like the terrorist. Hello, Samara. You exceeded my expectations today. Do you think you are? This is about who you are, Samara. What is this? History. Get this off me, you fucking son of a bitch! Shh, 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 shh. You will be a hero for what you're doing here, Samara. No one will believe you. I am not a terrorist. No. You're a citizen soldier inspired by Farah Karim to fight Russia. You're a freedom fighter. You're Russian. This plane is full of Russians. How could you kill your own people? No, I'm not killing them. You are. We need 8,000 feet, commander. Leo, we're going to die, Samara. So they strap a bomb to Samara and she goes back into the plane. People have their phones out, they are recording her, and it looks like she is the one attacking the people. However, we know that this is Makarov's responsibility. Task Force 141 finds video of Makarov getting onto the plane, so on and so forth. However, the world is not going to think that if they see the cell phone videos, if they get the black box footage, things along those lines. So Alex and Farah are sent in to go and recover it, and that's exactly what they do, making it again so that Makarov's plan is thwarted, and again, Yurzikstan does not seem at fault for this attack. Moving forward to November 21st, 2023, Makarov hires a hacker who uploads a Trojan virus to the British train system, allowing him to control it. This prompted Task Force 141 to intervene, and essentially what they end up doing is going into a tunnel where Makarov has once again a chemical bomb placed in the tunnels. It is at this point when Task Force 141 once again moves in to intervene that Makarov makes a surprise visit. <laughs> Take this to hell with you, Captain. Never bury your enemies alive. I'll be seeing you again. I promise. I promise. So as promised, Makarov did indeed see Soap McTavish once again, but at this time, he was the one holding the gun. Now, I want to make this very clear. With them stopping this bomb, essentially this was Makarov's last threat. He was trying to frame Yurzikstan for these attacks, but Task Force 141 kept stopping them. So at this point, Makarov has just killed So McTavish and escaped into the sunset. We don't know what he's planning yet, but we do know he is coming and going for Yurzikstan. Now, why is Makarov's story important to the modern warfare universe? Well, you see, if Makarov wasn't there, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, and Warzone stories would never have happened. Yes, the Barkov story from Modern Warfare 2019 still would have happened, but after that, nothing would have happened. If Soap McTavish would have just pulled this trigger, the Verdansk attack would have never happened. Shadow Company's ballistic missiles would never have been stolen and given to Alcatala because Makarov wouldn't have been able to give those orders. The gas from Zaya Observatory would never have been stolen. Makarov would never have been able to escape prison, never been able to kill Soap McTavish, never been able to take down the plane. None of the events of Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 3 would have happened if Soap just pulled the trigger. Hence why Captain Price gets a little mad at the end of the campaign. But here's what we don't know. After Makarov escapes the channel and runs away off into the sunset, we don't know what he is planning next. We know he wants to go for Yurzikstan. We know he wants to make them look like the bad guys. But at this point, we don't know how they are going to do it. We do know 
that Warzone is going to start to take place within Year's Extent. So I'm guessing within Season 1, we are going to get, be getting more information on this. But for now, Makarov is in the wind. We don't know what he's planning. We don't know where he is. However, we do know it's going to be something big. I promise. We are, we are real.